Hello everybody, this is uh, Priya here and I welcome you all to the H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is e-verified business and we are based in Atlanta. We provide 100% job oriented instructor led face to face true online software training. We have the cloud test lab with the software tools and also we assist in the live project works. We provide the mock interview sessions and also help the participants in order to prepare the resume and also we provide the resume review. We provide the job placement assistance and that is why we are trusted by many successful students worldwide. These are the world class services that are provided by the H2K Infosys. We offer the IT trainings with the real time project work for the corporates and the individuals and also for the MS students in US. We undertake the software design, the development, testing and then the maintenance. We provide IT staff augmentation, the job placement assistance and then the technical support. In this session we will be discussing about using the functions for the automation testing using the QTP. The quick test professional which is a functional automation tool from the HP company. We will discuss about the functions and we will also discuss about few examples on how to create the functions and how to call the functions. Let's understand some basics about the function. What is the meaning of function? Let me give you an example. Let's say I want to create a simple calculator. A simple calculator is basically a program that is going to add the two numbers or it can also subtract the two numbers. It can find the product of the two numbers that is multiplication and it can also divide the two numbers. And to create the simple calculator we are creating a script here which is accepting the values or the numbers from the user. It also accepts the choice of the user whether we need to do the addition, subtraction, multiplication or a division. And then based on the choice the numbers are either added or subtracted or multiplied or they can be divided. So this is basically a sequential programming or I can say that this is a linear script. All the steps are written in the sequential order in the same script file. Now let's see how to modularize this. In the modularized script we write a main function which is accepting the numbers from the user. It also accepts the choice of the user whether we need to add the number, we need to subtract the numbers, multiply them or divide them. And based on that the functions are called. The first function is basically the add function which is going to do the addition of the numbers. A subtraction function is going to find the difference between the two numbers. A multiplication function is going to multiply the two numbers and then we have a division function which can divide the two numbers. And we are calling the appropriate functions based on the choice of the user. So here you can see that each and every operation is written as a separate function or in other words I can say that my script is modularized. So a function is taking the input arguments and it also returns the result. Instead of writing the big bunch of code or the linear script, we can separate the code by writing the functions. Now let's see what are the advantages of the function. Why should we use the function? The first thing is it is modularizing the program. That is the program is written in more organized way. We create the separate functions for the different kind of operations. These functions are reusable. Means if you call or if you create a function once, 
it can it can be called any number of times you can create the function once and the same function can be called any number of times so this is another advantage of the functions and then the program or the script is more readable the errors are localized let's understand what is this localization of the error let's assume that there is some error in your program the error is the numbers are not getting added correctly so this is the error that we are getting when we execute the program or the script so in this linear script if i have to debug for the error i need to test right from the line 1 to the last line all the statements have to be checked or we need to debug the entire program in order to find where exactly the error is located and when we try to fix the error there is a possibility that it can affect any other part of this program let me repeat in order to debug the error in this linear script we need to test the entire program or we need to debug the entire program secondly when we fix the program or we fix the defect or the error in the program in that case it can affect any part of the program but if we are modularizing the program or the script in case the two numbers are not getting added i target directly here i need to check for the error only in this part of the program because we are very much sure that since the error is related to the addition so the error will be localized here in the addition function in the add function so we need not test the entire program i can test or i can debug a specific function in which the error is likely to occur secondly if i am fixing the error in the script it is not affecting the remaining part of the program it just affects only within the function so i can say that your error is not only localized but after we fix again if there are any kind of errors they will be again present in the same function it's not going to affect the remaining part of the code so this is one of the main advantage of using the function now what should you know about the function so you should know how to create a function and you should know how to call a function so let's see what is the syntax that is used in order to create a function and also call a function to create a function you need to write function which is a keyword and then you need to mention the name of the function and then you can pass any number of arguments that you want on which you are going to do some calculation or you are going to use these input values in order to do some processing so these are nothing but the input values to the function and here you need to mention all the steps that are to be executed as a part of the function and then we need to use a keyword called as end function so this is how to create a function now let's see how to call a function in order to call a function you need to call it with its name so this is a function name using which you are going to call the function and the input values which are to be sent to the function are to be mentioned over here so you need to mention all the input values here in this bracket and these input values will be the arguments or the input to the function so whatever you enter here in the value one it gets into the argument one you enter whatever here in the value two for example if i write here three and this is four and this is eight so this value three is entered here in the argument one argument one equal to three the value four it is passed here into the argument two the value eight it is passed in the argument three and so on okay 
So in the same sequence, the arguments or the values are passed over here as the input values to the function. So you need to take care of the sequence of the values in which you are entering the input values. And in order to get the result, we need to mention a variable over here which is going to collect the result of the function. So this is how you need to create and call the function. There is one more example over here, the real time example. This is a balance transfer or let's say the fund transfer in your online banking account. Let's say we have the internet banking. And this is a fund transfer feature. How does the fund transfer feature work? If you click on the fund transfer button, then a page opens in which you need to enter the account number from which you want to do the transfer. You need to select the account number to which you want to make the fund transfer. You need to enter the amount that you want to transfer and then you can click on the submit button or the confirm or transfer button whichever is available and then once you click the transfer button a confirmation page appears here and you need to confirm the transaction once you confirm the transaction the transaction ID is generated So these are the steps that we need to follow in order to do the fund transfer. Now let's say we write a function for this. So first of all we need to create a function. And in order to create a function we use the keyword called as function. And then we write the name of the function. It is the transfer of the balance. So we write it as a balance transfer or you can also write it as a fund transfer. And then you need to pass the account number and also the two account number to which you want to make the transfer and these are the two values or the arguments that we are going to pass here so the step number one we need to select the account number from which we need to make the transfer secondly we need to select the account number to which we need to make the transfer and then you need to enter the amount that you want to transfer which should be basically within the balance of your account and then you click on the transfer button the confirmation page is displayed and then you are validating the values as the input on the previous page and then the confirm button is clicked and then once the confirm button is clicked a transaction ID is generated which means that the fund transfer is completed so here the fund transfer is one transaction for which we are creating a function. This is one example of where we can use the function in the real time project. There is another example over here which is calculating the interest amount. And here we are accepting the variables, the amount the principal amount and then there is some percentage over here which we are accepting as the argument or the input value. The dim keyword it is used for the declaration of the variables. So we are declaring the values here or the variables here the amount and then the principal which are decimals. We are declaring the rate here which is going to be the interest rate and in order to enter the year we are declaring another variable that is year and we get the result in the output which is the amount or the principal amount plus the interest that is to be paid for each year. Let's assume that the principal amount is thousand dollars and the rate of interest is five percent and this is the display that we are making so the output equal to year and v tab is used for 
the tab it is as good as you use the tab key from your keyboard and then the amount on the deposit so this gets displayed as the text value as it is the VB clear function this is nothing but it's going to take it's a carriage return it takes you to the next line then this is a script for calculating the amount after each year this is a for loop so we start the execution from here the for loop starts the execution from the first line when the year is equal to 1 so here the year is equal to 1 and then it goes on up to 10 so can you see here it is year equal to 1 to 10 so the execution starts from 1 and then it goes up to 10 and we calculate the amount here the amount is principal multiplied by 1 plus rate into the year raised to the year and then we get the output every time the amount and we need to display this output and also the amount is displayed for each and every year so for the first year how much is the amount to be paid for the second year how much is the amount to be paid for the third year what is the amount to be paid and it displays up to the 10 years so for all the 10 years what are the different amounts to be paid the entire result set is generated in this interest calculator so this is another function which is used for the calculation of the interest every year thanks everybody for attending this session on the functions you can register for the free demo class from the h2k infosys by visiting to www.h2kinfosys.com or you can also call us on 770-777-1269 or you can write us an email to training at h2kinfosys.com with your name and then the contact. Our training coordinator will contact you for the enrollment. Thanks again everybody for attending the session from H2K Infosys.